the main concern that we've had is, I'm going to quote, lumpy, bumpy spots and cysts, kind of here, that don't come to a head, don't do anything, tend to hang around, and you can't get rid of them. What sort of top three tips would you have for help me get rid of these God, bumpy, bumpy things that just come up and make my life a misery and won't go anywhere? So what you describe is classic adult female acne. So it goes from being a T to being a U or a muzzle zone. I like that T to a U. Yeah, T to you. <laughs> um, surgical mask distribution. Now we have yeah. all sorts of lovely ways of referring to it. It's a pattern we don't see in men. Mm -hmm. It's clearly hormonally related. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that your hormone levels are necessarily out of whack. It just means that this is the zone of the face that, that relates is to that area to changes in progesterone and also testosterone mm -hmm. and also stress hormones. So, um, so this is a typical zone when we break out just before their period. You know, it's like a little triangle here. Mm -hmm. and here mm -hmm. and you know it sort of just goes up and it goes back down and it goes up and it goes down and it can like last like that for a couple of weeks and as you say they don't come to a head um so in terms of what women can do the problem is that when women break out they go a bit crazy and they take advice from anyone and everyone <laughs> everybody and they throw everything at their skin and it just winds it up for them. they scrub they use brushes they irritate Mm -hmm. You can say crap with my channel, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so, I would suggest that people do one of three things. Firstly, do no harm. So get rid of any counterproductive beauty habits. Um, I'm a great believer when your skin goes crazy, pairing it right back mm -hmm. to basic Calm cleanse, down. moisturize mm -hmm. and treat, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm a fan of using French pharmacy brands in these instances because they tend to literally do that. They do no harm and they support the use of active ingredients. Yeah. So that's step one. And, and that applies to makeup too, not just to your skincare. Mm -hmm. So throw out the brushes, throw away abrasive masks, anything that's got gritty texture and to it. And anything that you would, that the average woman would typically start using, doing, immediately exactly. start doing. Yeah. Because there's a feeling of actually, you know, you're 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 getting involved, you're 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 taking action. Yeah. Um. So that kind of squeaky clean feeling is not to be strived for. That generally winds like acne up further. Um. So throw away your aggressively foaming cleansers. All those things. Simplify. Gentle non-foaming cleanser is usually the right way to go, and that means getting rid of long wear foundations and concealers and compact base. All these sorts of things that are really hard to remove because yeah. that will just you know, inflame the process further by creating a sort of downward spiral. Um, so I'm a great fan of keeping your base really light, simple water-based, um, tinted moisturizer, BB cream, whatever you want to call it, that tends not to clog pores and then just building coverage where you need it. Yeah. And Fichy Derma Blend Foundation Stick is an example of a really awesome product for doing that. So yeah. a lot of women in the UK, they kind of cut corners when it comes to base. It's easier to sort of apply a really heavy product all over than it is to no, dot, not what you dot the dots, as I call it. So yeah. um, so that's the first step, cut it all right back. Yeah. Then you need two things in terms of your skincare routine. Um, you need an anti-inflammatory agent, so that'll be step number two, and you need a preventer. And unless you're pregnant, that means a retinoid. Yeah. Um, and those are the steps that anybody can take whenever they walk into their pharmacy. They can seek out those ingredients. In terms of anti-inflammatories, or the fire extinguishers, I call it, um, you, the best thing is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is a great antibacterial um, and anti-inflammatory. In certain formulations, however, particularly in adult right. women, it can be really hard to tolerate. Yeah. I think if you have the right support products in the background, you can usually find a way to manage it. And you start slow, and you start with small quantities, and you, you, you basically build up over the course of a skin cycle, that's six weeks. Mm -hmm. So no one should be putting it on all over you know, the first week of And that's of when the problems happen, isn't it? Because people just go, oh, this looks like it's working, and then they slather yeah. themselves in it. The burning must be good, right? Yeah. No, the burning is wrong. The burning is going to give you eczema as well as acne, and yeah. you're going to, you know, hate yourself. Ah. Yeah, exactly. We can't sleep <laughs> your week going forward. All dates will be off. Um, so you want to start with small amounts, and you, want to, and you want to do it less frequently, building up to more frequently. Um, and typically, I recommend using the anti-inflammatory step in the morning. 
then you want to use your prevention step at night and that's typically a retinoid so one of the vitamin a molecules over the counter um the typical ones are retinol retinaldehyde um mm -hmm. And what is it called? Well, those ones. It doesn't penetrate terribly well. It's a though. bit of a wussy one, isn't it? Yeah. But I always think it's a good place to start for people who are a bit scared. <laughs> and they might have some kind of effect and it might reassure them that they're not going to burn their face off, for example. It's true. I think it's one of those things that, that if you poodle around for too long, you can often lose hope and then you're susceptible to the next person mm. coming along giving you advice and you don't mm. give it long enough. Yeah. Bear in mind, you need that six weeks minimum to really start to affect change. So retinaldehyde is quite a good one if you're concerned about high strengths of retinol, which can be a little bit irritating. I find retinol is reasonably well tolerated, actually. I'll get some um, um, product recommendations off of you and put them in the links below. Okay. That really looked like I was pointing right between your breasts, and I do apologize, <laughs> Dr. Sam. Let's just do this instead. <laughs> okay. Um, so strip it back. Anti-inflammatory. Anti retinoid. And if that's not working, then you may well need prescription grade input, um, whether it's topicals alone, topicals plus orals to tide you over until you know things calm down again. Um, but that is a good place to start um, and, and, and get rid of everything else. Perfect, thank you. <laughs>